you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. You are. And you are wearing cool pants. Thanks for my cool pants. Shout out. I like your cool, cool pants, pants shout today. Out of the day. I like your pants too. You bought me these pants. Yeah. Um, you're wearing like, I feel like the only thing, I, don't take this the wrong way because I mean it as a compliment. They remind me of like train conductor pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I like them. Yeah. I imagine myself like uh, officiating a wedding for a friend in Italy with these. Yeah, I see that. They're linen. They're linen? Mm-hmm. Are they cozy? I, as cozy as linen could be. Like I, think, yeah. I feel like if you're outside in the sun and you have to wear pants, sure, linen, but like. If you're in the it's sheets, not comfortable. it's not that comfortable. It's a little bit scratchy, right? Yeah, yeah. You can feel like we're married. I feel my pants. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the permission and consent. Yeah. Um, I like them. They look cool. I Thanks. didn't even know you owned those. And now we're I know you do. Newer pants. Um, anyway, hi, everyone. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I feel like this podcast I is think getting- they were an Instagram ad. Those ever get you? Oh, yes. Because you know what my Instagram ads are? You know all the weird all outfits? Pumps? All the weird outfits I put our kids in? Oh, I bet they are. Always. I get Instagram it's, ads for cute, like little baby clothes. Yeah. Probably shouldn't. Oh, well, I mean, maybe they're what? small businesses that are reaching out this way. But I don't, I mean, it seems like I feel like they're listening to us well, and certainly. being like, Eric's looking for some pants. <laughs> and so we'll just put all pants ads. And then I, then they're like, um, what if like we made it as easy as he could just buy it with his face? I know. And a <gasps> click. Oh, by the way. And then I, uh, I do occasionally buy it. I mean, they work. They really do work on those Instagram ads. Yeah, me too. If it's if it's baby clothes, if it's cute baby clothes, you got me good. But also, I know we've talked about this before on the podcast. But like, if it's not, if I can't buy it with my face, nah. Right. Yeah. Nah. Like, I don't got time. I don't think I've ever bought anything uh, for our babies off of an Instagram ad. Just myself. Mm. I'm selfish in that way. No, you're not. You're anyway. You're not selfish. You are doing. Um, what's the word? I'm like. Th- uh, therapy what's it called retail therapy for yourself yeah they they grow out of these clothes though so like rapidly mm-hmm. that um and i guess we have people that we know that we can uh give them to uh foundations we can donate them to and we do um but that's why i like getting them cute clothes because it's like they only you have a very short window of time where they can wear cute tiny little clothes you love it you seem to be doing I like a it. like they're very matchy matchy sometimes when you dress them they always poop in um, it right when I dress the matchy matchy. Right. Any any nice outfit you're like, oh, I'm gonna you do like these like TikTok things where you like throw the clothes at our babies and then all of a sudden it cuts to them wearing it. Mm-hmm. You know, you violently throw the clothes. Oh my god, no, I do not. By the way, Maisie the loves young, that. Uh yeah, she does. Um and then you put them in these cute outfits and then and you're watching them and then and then I'll, you'll say like, hey, can I go work for a little bit? And I'll watch them and then they'll immediately poop to their neck. Always. And destroy that outfit. Whenever I put them matching, they poop and destroy the outfit. It's literally happened three to four times, four I would times, say. Yeah. And then what I do with the pooped outfit is I put it in our secondary sink. Just in a wet And ball. I turn the faucet on and then I wash my hands of the poop over the outfit, <laughs> then I turn the sink off and then I walk away. I know. Right now in that sink is a is a wet poopy outfit that's been there for two days. Well, just since yesterday. This is a fact I will admit to. Yeah. Yeah. Two days. But I, I, I eventually take them and wash them and take them upstairs. But yeah. But anyway, who needs to relax today for you, my dear? Uh I was thinking about social interactions and that led me to like nicknames i thought you were gonna say uh, nicotine uh, no. <laughs> no nicotine's great um <laughs> love me no it's not uh i would i would so i there's this thing where like i kind of assimilate to the social interaction that i'm having i don't think i've talked to this about before but like for me as as a, um as a cis male mm-hmm. uh when i'm in it like if i'm buying something at a 7-eleven right there you go bro oh thanks bro Mm-hmm. There you go, buddy. Thanks, buddy. There you go, guy. Thanks, guy. There you go, dude. Thanks, dude. Like I, I, whatever they. No one says whatever, guy. I do. You do. I love whatever, that you but do. Whatever energy that this person gets off, and, and in our area, I feel like it's a lot of bros. Mm-hmm. You know, bro and man, bro and man. 
Um, and I wondered if for, and I don't know why, like I just, why not just, cause I feel like I would say guy, you, you got a guy or mm -hmm. dude, you ever get a boss? See, this is, um, this is where I'm going with this. Is there in, in your world, in the world of, of Colleen, is there a, is there like a similar experience that you have interacting in your world? As for me, as like a, as a, a woman? Well, I'll say this. You, I'm not going to name this person, but you had, a, you had a friend stop by mm -hmm. uh, to the other day. And when you guys were talking, um, it was all like, love that. Love that for you. Like, yes. Yeah. And I was like, I had not heard you talk like that in a while. I guess we haven't like seen too many oh, friends. Right. Like, so I had, but like, I was like, why is she doing this weird affectation and accent? And I feel like you were just kind of. That's how I talk to my friends. Uh, how you talk to your friends, maybe, or like, this, yeah. or like, maybe you talk to different friends a different way. No, I think I talk to all my friends because all my friends are gay men and gay women. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so what do they? So they say, "Girl." Well, sure, but I mean, yes, so do yeah, I. girl. Sure, girl, yes, girl, but like, but like, love that, yeah. Love but that. also, I'm from California, and so when I'm around other people who are from California, like. Yeah. I feel like my California accent comes out a little bit thicker. Like, I uh -huh. feel like you've noticed that when I'm around like relatives. It's truly, who, it's truly like, Californian. Yeah. Like, if, like from the sketch Californians, like it's, it's not that intense, but like I do have like a little bit of a California, like laid back accent and that comes out more intensely when I'm with my friends, but I do talk to my friends when I'm excited and I'm with my friends. I definitely talk like, how? However, yeah, whatever that relationship is, you talk like yeah. But I'm with you. I'm like, you oh, match the energy. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and like an affectation almost. I would say. Yeah, I guess so. Which yeah. I do uh -huh. with like picking up my car from my oil chains. There you go, bro. Thanks, bro. Like I yeah. like I do. I like I feel yeah. like socially obligated. Right. To do that, it's so strange. Yeah, I think for me, part of it is like I get so excited, like when I'm with my friends because I never see my friends anymore. And when I do, like, so I'm thinking of like when I'm around like Frankie or uh -huh. like Joey or you know Corey when Lots we get excited, of, yes, like my yes. like yes, oh my god, yes, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like it's like a uh -huh. lot of like we get excited, we're very excitable together, and our energies get more and more excited together. Okay, but so like, like okay, Sorry. Frankie's probably going to come to a couple shows. I didn't tell you this yet. Cool. Awesome. And, um, which I'm so excited about a couple of my live shows and our like texts to each other, our voice notes to each other are already like, so f they're that. And like oh, when we're together, when it's me, Corey and Frankie, mm -hmm. it's going to be like, imagine the highest level energy you can imagine. It's going to be like times a trillion, yeah, like that's the a lot of energy insane. right there, but I'm so excited about it. But I think just like when I'm with you and when I'm just at home, like I'm just more chill. Uh -huh. but like when I get like excited and you know, see, like, I feel like you talk like, um, yeah, I think you have an affectation when you're with your buddies, like back in Connecticut too. Nothing crazy, but yeah. I think like you're more like, you're more bro. Yeah. Well, there's like a new England -y, yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't say I'm com not like I don't go hard like like yo bro bro like I'm no, not no 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 um it's more of a guy guy yeah come on relax guy yeah like uh, yeah yeah, that, yeah yeah um but like when you go to so you say you're in a Seven Eleven uh -huh. you're buying some donuts donuts oh okay Isn't donuts, that the little yes. donuts yeah, in, the, okay. in the sure strip okay uh what are they here you go doll. Oh, good Here lord! Go. No, I would vomit if someone said "doll" to sweetie, me. I'd come sweetie, home into sweetie doll. No, I mean maybe what, what, a, what would a they woman say? might. A uh -huh. woman might be like, "Here you go, sweetie," or "Here you go, honey." Uh huh. Um, honey, yeah. But not really. No, usually there's not really an interaction. If if anything, if it's like a guy, certainly doesn't say anything. If they won't. They won't say "honey doll." Baby I would face. be disgusted if they yeah, did. Yeah, it would be creepy, It would make right? me feel really uncomfortable. I'd be very uncomfortable if a man, and I'm not saying that everyone, everyone would feel uncomfortable with that. Me personally, like that makes me very uncomfortable when a man who is not you calls me any nickname. It makes me very uncomfortable. Okay. Unless it's a gay man who's like, sweetie <laughs> or like what you know what i mean like i guess yeah but if a straight man calls me a nickname uh -huh. i don't take it as like a sweet kind compliment i take it as like creepy and it makes it just makes me very uncomfortable okay but that's just me personally uh -huh. but that doesn't really happen i'm sure it's situational i'm trying to think like if i if i bought something like a gas station or like whatever it's just like yeah no there's not really nicknames or like little like cutesy i think that's like a dude thing 
Well, I feel like the the older woman working a, as a cashier somewhere would be like, here you go, sweetie. Like, I feel like I've gotten that yeah, maybe, bunch, yeah. like, kind of a thing. And I yeah. wouldn't think, and I feel like a, a guy calling me boss is worse. Like, here you go, boss, bro. I feel like that's worse mm -hmm. than this woman calling me sweetie. Yeah. Now in relationships, I have to admit that we call each other. Lovey. Yeah, which is like, I mean, arguably that's gross, right? Maybe like to some people, of, like I love of, it for us. I love it for us too. And we do this and that's fine. I mean, it's maybe it's cringy to other people. Is it? I mean, I like, you know, objectively speaking, like it's a little bit like cutesy and gross, but okay. like, but like we like it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And I would certainly like, I'm not going to start calling you your name. I don't I even remember, know how to say it. I remember the first time I called you lovey. Uh -huh. You were like, do you just call me lovey yeah. or love? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, and you were like, I like that. Like it was, I remember the first time yeah. it happened, you were like taken back by it and you said you like, maybe you lied, but you said you liked it. Yeah, I liked it. And um, it's fine. It's great. <laughs> no, I do. I do. And like other, I'm sure other people in the world call each, in relationships, call each other lovey. I feel like yeah, I've heard it like too. in things. Um, but. Nothing else. Like. Nothing if else. You, if, <laughs> hey, if you're listening right now and you're in a relationship with a partner, or partners, and you call them babe. <laughs> we don't do that. What? I said, we don't do that. No, we do not do that. No, we do not. If you call, if you call your partner, babe. I think everyone calls their partner, babe. I know they do. <laughs> but we don't. We I don't like them. But you know why? It's like, it's a very, we were very like elitist about our love when we started dating. Because it was just like such an intense. Like we're like, no one else knows about this. Yeah, we're like, no one knows about this. We're the only people who have ever been this in love in the whole universe. Um, and so. Like the idea of calling you babe felt like an insult. Ugh. Do you know what I mean? Cause I was like, you're not my babe. Like everyone calls their significant other babe. Like you're not my babe. Like you're, you're my, you're there. I didn't feel like there was a word that existed that described how I felt about you and like uh -huh. our relationship. And we talked about that a lot. And well, so I hear it. It's in public or in social events. Hey, I'm babe. just, yeah. Ugh. Get out of here. <laughs> what about, there was a period of time where you called me daddy a lot. <laughs> what are you he's joking no i'm not i've never that no i certainly have not definitely not I, but well, we that, will well, we have on a, I sorry i just interrupted you That's but fine. because we have children now. children we call flynn we've always since he was our first kid and he didn't have a name for a long time we got very used to calling him baby and as you, a lot of you might know he calls himself and we call him baby Flynn, even though he's three, he still like, I'm baby Flynn. Like he's kind of like our baby. Big, like, he's kind of starting to say I'm big boy Flynn now. Though. Yeah. But anyway, he's always been baby Flynn. And so sometimes we're like, Oh baby, are you okay? You know, like we talked to him like that and we in our tired state of minds have often, not often, I guess like maybe once a month it happens where we'll be like, Hey baby. And we're like, Oh, and we oh, immediately yeah. catch it. We immediately are like, oh, Sorry. I didn't yeah. need to do that. Yeah, I just, that's always... what I call Flynn. So that it just came out. You know, come to think of it though, in front of him though, when we're like, like, like I'll call you mommy in front of him when he's like, oh, mommy's got to see this. And I'll be like, mommy, come here. Like, I'll call mm -hmm. you mommy. And you'll say like, daddy, <laughs> show daddy, yeah. daddy, come here. So you do call it kind of, I guess do call so, me daddy. Yeah. Oh, is that cringy? Yeah. Oh, darn um, it. But I'm not going to be like, go show Eric <laughs> to our three-year-old. I'm going to go show daddy. Oh. Anyway, so wait, what did what needed to relax? I don't. I well, people who say babe. I guess. Or was I it guess. The interaction yeah, it was at, one of those. It, you know, it was a twisty. Um, you know, the kind of M Night Shyamalan ending to like my <laughs> Who Needs to Relax, and we found it, and it's people who call their significant other babe. So everyone who's ever been in a relationship, I guess. Um, but you know, who doesn't need to relax is Helix. Oh my babe. You guys know we have a Helix mattress in our home. We love sure the Helix mattress, guys. We've had it for a while, and it's great because even though we don't ever get to sleep, those moments where we do, we want to make sure it is a very oh, enjoyable, God. wonderful moment. We to, when we can get it, we need it. 20 minutes at a time, we're like, it better be the best mattress in the world, which is why we love our Helix mattress. Um, it is so wonderful. We are obsessed with it. And also, it was really fun to unbox. Oh, my gosh. It like explodes out of the box. Well, it doesn't explode. How did I get all that mattress in that little box? I don't know. It's box. really impressive, guys. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix? You're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. 
Everyone's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. We took the Helix quiz and we were matched with the medium firm. Midnight Lux. Yeah, Midnight Lux. We're side sleepers. We needed, some, yeah, we needed something for our little side sleeping bodies. So also said it absorbs uh, farts on the website. It, it does not say that, but it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not yours. <laughs> it's great. We love it. It is so wonderful. We are sleeping better since we got it. And you guys might too if you want to check it out. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to. The mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take our word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving sleep. Fancy that. Just go to helixsleep.com slash <laughs> just go to Helix Don't Sleep. Trust them. Just go to helixsleep.com slash RCE, take their two minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but obviously you're going to. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash RCE. Again, that is helixsleep.com slash RCE. Well, I love you. And I it's you. time, what? Well, hey, before, t- I something t- maybe we could do for the rest of the episode. What? Let's, tr- let's call each other babe. Ugh. Why would you say that? I don't know, babe. Ugh. I don't like it at all. I don't like, I feel like it's babe. demeaning. I feel like it's like you're, t- you're talking, babe. you think less of me. I feel like you love me less uh-huh. when you say babe. Um, you know what I mean? Like, doesn't it feel like, like d- if, let me try it on you, okay? Yeah. All right, babe. Is that okay? Ugh. So, babe, do you want to hear what I? Ah, (laughs) I I wince. Uh, Did you say babe in past relationships? Probably. Yeah, probably. (laughs) And obviously I didn't like that. I did. I think I did, too. (laughs) But yeah, no way. Didn't work out, did it? (laughs) No, (laughs) but it's like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it it felt like a, it felt like such not the right word for what we had. I was like, what? Yeah. I'm not going to call him babe. Did you, did we we already talk about nicknames you had? For what? Like when you were growing up? I don't think I had any. I thought of a funny nickname for you if you ever got COVID. Coveline. Coveline. Yeah. I, I like hope that. you don't. Yeah, I hope I don't too, uh, but. Um, if you do. You're going to call me Coveline. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I like it. I shouldn't joke about that. No, I'm probably not, but it's, that was a good one. I'm not joking about it. Just, um, that's what I'll call you. Okay, thank you. Um, do you want to know who needs to relax for me or do you think we should skip that? <clears throat> I don't want to skip that. Oh, I know what it's going to be then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Of course it is. You going to talk about? Let's do on on three. One, two, three. Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. (laughs) So, guys. That was right. I'm not going to talk about it long because I don't want to gross anyone out because everyone's like, you're you're so gross. And like, yes, I agree. gross about hemorrhoids? They are in your butt. That's what's gross about them. They're in it? Well, like, you know. Sometimes, sometimes they're out and around anyway, but they can be. Yeah. They can be all, it's, there's you a lot, the there's lots of different kinds. Um, education podcast. I had, when I was pregnant with Flynn and when I was pregnant with the twins, I had hemorrhoids. When I gave birth to both babies, because you, with Flynn, especially because I pushed so much. I'm so uncomfortable. I've turned to just picking cat hair off the microphone. I love that for you. <clears throat> um, hemorrhoids, lots of hemorrhoids. Okay. Never had hemorrhoids in my life that that I can remember. Have you ever had hemorrhoids? No, babe. Ugh, gross. <laughs> That's worse than hemorrhoids. You call me babe is worse than hemorrhoids. Never um, had them in my whole life. For some reason, for 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 no reason, I should say, hemorrhoids just out of nowhere, right now, just happened on me. It's not like I had a crazy poo that was pushing out. No, I know this is TMI, guys, but whatever. It, yeah, I just, oh. I just, I got hemorrhoids. Okay. And it is so <laughs> painful. So painful. I am in 
I am in agony. It hurts to sit. It hurts to walk. It hurts. When I sneeze, get out of here. Everything, it hurts so bad. So are you, you're, you're positing that sneezing is very tied to the anus? I think I'm proving it. This <laughs> I never knew, but I, now I know. There's a link. There's a scientific link. I just link. can't. I just don't understand how they happened out of nowhere that I just have them and that they won't go away. They're getting worse. I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. Can I and show that? Can I show? Agony. Uh, can I show the picture you sent me the other night where you <laughs> oh, God. where you said? <laughs> <laughs> we're getting real personal. Yeah, where, on you, this where you sent me a picture? You were upstairs in the bathtub, Epsom salt with bath, an Epsom salt bath, and you said, "Be right down, just soaking my." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. To put that on the screen, sure okay. or not. Uh, um, it just says, it just says on the screen, picture of Galeen soaking anus. <laughs> like there's no picture. Maybe just, just do that. that. <laughs> Maybe just put that text over and we'll just let that. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's not well, fun. So I don't want to like dwell on it too much. I just want to, the only reason I'm saying this is because, you know, anyone out there who suffers from uh, hemorrhoids. You're just. I understand your pain. Bringing awareness. It is. It is I, it is so painful. This is worse. I've ever had it. And I had really bad ones when I pushed Flynn out. But with Flynn, I was on painkillers after because I had so many stitches and all that mamma jamma down there. Mm. So I guess I didn't notice how painful they were because obviously I don't have painkillers right now. So I'm like just feeling it and it is not fun to feel. It is. I'm in agony. Days How, of this. How's everyone else doing? Are they as uncomfortable as I am? Oh my gosh. Why are you so uncomfortable talking about my I, booty hole? Uh, love, babe. Ugh. Lovely. Anyway, so that's who needs to relax for me. Sorry, TMI, but no, I don't really care. I don't really have too much um, to add to that. I can't I'm, really. I, I don't can't know. believe you never experienced it. I'm so glad you never well, experienced it. It is a horrendous feeling. Yeah. It is so mother effing painful. It's real bad. Uh huh. Anyway, we've already done like a butt stuff episode. I feel like we every episode is butt stuff. <laughs> There's some form of butt stuff in every episode. Uh huh. I just heard something so weird. Yeah, it was like a crack in the walls. Yeah, that was, was weird. That, I, think. <laughs> I don't know why'd you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you just got spooky in here. I just got goosebumps, did you? <laughs> no, I just. But there was a crack. I in just the got wall. hemorrhoids. That was oh, so spooky. I hope you didn't. That would be so bad. Anyway, that was my who needs to relax this week. Was just hemorrhoids. So sorry, I wasn't that exciting. But like hemorrhoids I so canceled. Much cancel, cancel the hemorrhoids. Um, wow. Yeah. Well, can we cancel hemorrhoids? I wish we could do that. I thought about, it's funny, I thought about making you, I actually went on, you know, like those websites where you can make t-shirts with text? Mm -hmm. I thought about um, you all, <laughs> thought about making you a t-shirt and I filled it out, but then I could, I didn't never ordered it because I think I was like somewhere when I was doing it, um, but I ordered you a t-shirt that said, ask me about my sty. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good shirt you um, know what i just thought of because though? you always have styes i always too. have styes always have i'm just i'm always a walking something but you know what i just realized Webby, i only have hemorrhoids <laughs> when i'm pregnant or i've just had kids i didn't just have kids but should i take a pregnancy test live on the air no why I not what if i'm pregnant what Stop. if <laughs> you're so it's worse than you calling me babe or talking about I, I know um if I could only know. if you squat down and pee on it right here on camera um I mean I don't know why you think I haven't already done something like that before have you I'm sure you have. I've peed on sticks that's like how my pregnancy announcements happen is I'm like peeing on pregnancy sticks where are you going oh I'm just trying to adjust my hemorrhoids oh. hurt <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway, what a, what a good, uh, good episode. Good episode. Good episode that's babe. it. That's the episode. That's, that's it, babe. Thanks for listening. That's it, babe. No, we do have some fun stuff planned for this episode. Um, I have yes. more fun facts uh, that I'm so excited to talk about. And I'm that doing I, my. That I learned from TikTok. Oh, of course, from TikTok. Where else do you? And, where else do you learn facts or read? Mm -hmm. Is TikTok. Okay, I can't believe you're still Speaking of reading, this. I'm coming up. I have a, uh, some book reviews because I read books and love literature. <laughs> I have a new obsession. Sorry, I yawned. I have a new obsession. It's a TV show that I'm like, I am just, oh my goodness. I, I, I'm on fire when I talk about the show. It's so incredible. So I really want to talk about this show. It's like. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed. And then I'm freaking at out. At the end of the episode, I will be live on the podcast clipping Colleen's toenails. 
never <laughs> in a trillion years would I ever let Come that on. happen. You know, some couples are like, I would, no couples do that. I, <laughs> couples that call each other babe clip each other's toenails. <laughs> no, you know, but some couples will like, they're like pop pimples. Oh, each other. Get out of here. I think that's so freaking gross. Yeah, that's uh, some people like really. Well, um, I would never, I wouldn't pop your zits. I love you. And I would never pop your zits. I let you wipe my butt. You know, I'd be like, some couples are weird. And they'll be like, would you wipe my butt for me if I was old and like, whatever. I'd never pop your zits for you. I love you to death. And I wouldn't unless you really like made me. And I would <laughs> never let you clip my toenails or like kind of ever really get near my feet. I don't like feet. Just not my thing. You know, you're speaking to like a human person who literally sucked blood out of your <laughs> okay we're not going two weeks there. ago <laughs> i know this is the thing it's like i'm discussing like i'm so gross so it doesn't make any sense like you literally like i had mastitis and like we did what needed to be done to make it happen but like i i i don't know i would wipe your butt i'd let you wipe my butt i'm talking about my hemorrhoids and i'm like don't clip my toenails i'm weird about toes yeah Anyway, um, we're not actually going to do that. I just thought to no, say we are it. Not. And I knew that Why you were... did you say that though? Don't look at my toes. Now I'm self conscious. What if I painted them? No, we're not doing that. No, no, we're 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 gonna say hi to that our. That sounds like it'd be audibly sponsor, really sponsor. good. Me painting your toenails. Um, well, Audible is not the next sponsor. I thought that's. I didn't what... say Audible. I said audibly. Oh, I thought they, you were trying to do a patent the word like. No, I just thought you were trying to like do a smooth segue, and I was like, that's not our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> they have been. Our next sponsor is. Thanks, anyways. <laughs> Framebridge. We would like to say thank you, and we're so excited about Framebridge, you guys. We love Framebridge. Oh my gosh, the amount of money Eric has spent at Framebridge before they sponsored us. I know it's so weird that I had spent a bunch of money with them uh, right before we got sponsored with them. I mean, because they're great, though. Worth it, yeah. And um, I and I think a very reasonably priced totally. compared to like other framing is like expensive, man. super expensive, and it's not easy. And with them, I literally just downloaded an app, uploaded it like a digital image to the app, a thing that my mom had painted mm -hmm. of my father, mm -hmm. and printed it very big. And it's it's awesome. framed and it looks. Great. It looks so good. You guys. It's personal endorsement. Um, we have to tell you about this amazing new service we found called FrameBridge. FrameBridge makes it super easy and affordable to frame your favorite things from art, prints, and posters to the travel photos sitting on your phone with Mother's Day around the corner. Hey, do you know that? I don't know any mothers. Oh, okay. With Mother's Day around the corner, Framebridge also makes the perfect gift. In fact, select gifts ship next day. Here's how it works. Just go to framebridge.com and upload your photo, or they'll send you packaging <laughs> to safely mail in your physical pieces. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm a little giggly. Right now. She has the giggies. <laughs> I've got the giggies. Don't say giggies. Uh, I've got the giggies. Preview your item online in dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts. Choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers. The experts at Framebridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Instead of the hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at $39 and all shipping is free. Plus, our listeners will get 15% off their first order at framebridge.com when they use our code RELAX. Order online at framebridge.com or stop by a Framebridge store to work with a designer in person if you're in New York, D.C., Atlanta, Philly, Boston, or Chicago. So guys, get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and use promo code RELAX to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to framebridge.com, promo code RELAX. That's framebridge.com, promo code RELAX. So now, you know, now you know what to get me for Mother's Day. Now you know what to get my mom for Mother's Day. And I already have the Framebridge. Hey, yo. Okay, can we do TikTok facts? Because I've been really excited about this. Yeah, first I wanted to apologize to you. Because oh. during that last break, I okay. felt really bad. And I just wanted to say to you that your hemorrhoids are valid. Thank you. And I believe in them. Thank you. And I, um, I'm I am sorry you're going through that. And it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're so weird. What are you doing right now? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to make you feel you're valid. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I don't need to feel validated in my hemorrhoids. They're, oh. it's a, they're like factually <clears throat> there. Like it's like they're literally and physically there. I don't need your validation to make them real. Well, like your, fe your feelings about them. My and feelings of pain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your pain. Yeah, hemorrhoid pain is uh, valid. Thank and you for giving me permission to be in pain for my hemorrhoids. I love you for that. Mm-hmm. 
Is there a catch here? What's going on? No, that was it. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, what a wonderful. I didn't want to get a bunch of hate tweets saying that Eric hemorrhoids are real. Yeah. Well, thank you for apologizing. I've been waiting for that apology for the last yeah. five minutes. Um, but I do want to talk about TikTok things. Can we talk about TikTok, please, love? It's my dream to talk about TikTok with you, babe. That's all um, you do. That's so, what you say to me. So we've been, if you guys have been listening every week, we sometimes, I think we've done it twice. Um, we'll do every where, week. <laughs> where okay. we, um, I will talk about things I've learned on TikTok. Uh-huh. And, and so they always blow my mind. I, I have some good ones this week. Yay. I found some fun, interesting facts. Did you know, I like this fact because it just so happens to be um, my sister-in-law's name, the name Jessica. Mm -hmm. It was just her birthday. We were just with her today celebrating her birthday. Uh -huh. It was very fun. Um, the name Jessica was invented by William Shakespeare himself. Did you know this? I didn't. I didn't know that. It's like such a popular name and Shakespeare created it. I think. I can't even He's, think of a Shakespeare play. Which, the Merchant of Venice. Of which of I've Venice. done many. Uh, someone named Jessica in that? that? That's the first ever recorded That's time where it was. the name Jessica came about, I guess. It's yeah, an interesting, interesting, like if you're going to like invent a name. It's beautiful. Which our son does a lot. He like, well, what are you going to name it? Like bugs and stuff. Dirtness. Dirtness was the most uh, recent. But, yeah. but if he was like Jessica and it was a word we'd never heard of mm -hmm. before, we'd be like, Jessica. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Usually when he makes up names for bugs and stuff, it's like, because, you know, like, right. that's kind of what Jessica is, right? Jessica. That was beautiful. I think it's such a pretty name, but. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought that was interesting. This one kind of blew my mind. And I that still- just, It just said that in a TikTok? Yeah. Sometimes people post TikToks where it's like interesting facts or like weird facts, or sometimes it's like someone talking about something uh -huh. So it's not, not just dancing. No, it's not just dancing. Um, people made fun of so, me for saying that. Well, yeah, because it's not even, no one even really dances. I mean, people do, but not really, at least not on my free page. This one is crazy to me. I can't believe it's real. I had like Googled it because I was like, there's no way. McDonald's made a bubblegum flavored broccoli and it never like came to fruition, but like they were genuinely doing this like for real, a bubblegum flavored broccoli. They were going to put it in happy meals. All those, those, I was, I just had the strangest experience and I don't know if you could see it on my face, <laughs> but all those words together, like didn't make sense <laughs> to my brain. Like I think you go bubble McDonald's gum. bubble gum broccoli and I go, well, it's kind of word association. <laughs> yeah. Strange. Like, I, Oh my God. Okay. Did yeah. they? Yeah. What do you mean? All right. So I'm looking it up and it says that uh, business, according to business insider, McDonald's CEO, Don Thompson revealed, this is in 2014, that um, alongside reducing French fry serving sizes and introducing milk, the chain also engineered the broccoli to taste like bubble gum to make kids meals more nutritious. Oh, not so not bubble gum that tastes like broccoli, but broccoli that tastes like bubble yes. gum. Yes. Okay. That's now weirder. It is. You you thought it I was, was weird like, to be bubblegum that tastes like well, broccoli? Well, I was like, why is McDonald's making bubblegum? No, broccoli that but tastes like- But then in like that context, now it's less weird that they're like, we'll make, we'll give them broccoli, but we'll make the broccoli just poison. Isn't that interesting? And uh, it obviously didn't happen. That is a weird uh, fact. You learned that on TikTok, huh? Someone, yeah. someone learned, that, someone read that somewhere and then it was like, I'll make a TikTok of it. And then like, it well, went they just viral. like put a bunch of, no, well, I don't know that it was viral, but they just put like a bunch of different facts on the screen. It says, if that didn't sound like it would taste good, it didn't. So they ended up, the McDonald's CEO said kids were confused by the taste. The bubblegum flavored broccoli was a failure. Interesting. I don't think broccoli tastes that bad. Um, I really like broccoli. It's like one of my favorite vegetables. It's pretty for much sure. a staple for most meals we it's, make. I know we always vegetable have broccoli. wise, like it's probably the vegetable I have the most is broccoli. And Flynn always says broccoli is his favorite food. And then every time we give it to him, he's like, this right. is disgusting. And he spits it out. But he's always like, I love broccoli. Broccoli is my favorite. Yeah. It's so funny. Okay. Here's another one. And everything's bubblegum flavored. Like why, why bubblegum? Like bubblegum is not if, a good flavor, gonna, by the way. If you're going to bubblegum flavor something, like it just reminds me of the dentist. Me office. too. If the dentist was like, you want bubblegum or you want broccoli, I would say broccoli because like I'm over the bubblegum flavor. Bubble, and it doesn't taste like bubblegum, first of all. Bubblegum, I don't know. Make bubblegum taste like broccoli. McDonald's got it backwards. I don't know about that, lovey. Okay. Um, okay, so, whoa, I almost dropped my phone. The next one, um, this one makes sense, but I just, I guess it's a fact I never thought about before. When the moon is directly above you, you weigh less. Of course. Isn't that wild to think about though? Like it's true, but it's not wild. So if you're ever going to weigh yourself. Like make sure the moon's right above your head. 
This um, one I did not know. Why? Because gravity. Yeah, because the moon, like the gravitational pull. Don't you know? come to us for science. Scientific well, you know, facts. that's like, I don't know. Go to it's TikTok like, for your scientific like, facts, not to us. That's why how waves are made. It's like the same thing. You I know, understand like, how that's you, how waves you, are yeah. made. Um, okay. This one, I feel like there's a lot of fruits that this is true about, and it would blow my mind if I knew them all, but lemons, mm-hmm. human invention. It's not like a natural thing that was like, just comes from the earth. Like humans what's it made a, that. What's it a, some botanist some citrus, was like. Pl- some citrus plant and something. I don't remember what I read, but. um. Some citrus plant and something else. But lemons are man-made. Yeah. Isn't that weird? This is where, I'm just like, to people listening to this, like, this is where you can hear third-hand, loosely based... TikTok facts? TikTok, TikTok science facts. facts. So lemons are, I think it's aren't interesting. real? They're real. Like, I mean, we eat them. They're delicious and they're real. But, like, it's not like just... If men didn't intervene, man or uh-huh. women, humans, didn't intervene... Lemons wouldn't ever have yeah. existed. You know what else wouldn't exist? Gus. You're yeah, that's awful true. cat. <laughs> Your cat is a Frankenstein monster <laughs> made by scientists to be like, how can we destroy everything Eric loves? Wow. With claws. And he, he pees poop on, he's and been pee. peeing on everything. Like, oh, he's the worst. I love him though. Okay, this one is the one that's most interesting to me. You ready? <clears throat> yes. This is my final one. You ready? Okay. Human saliva Ugh. has a painkiller in it okay. six times more powerful than morphine. Isn't that crazy? What? Saliva from humans has yielded a natural painkiller up to six times more powerful than morphine, researchers say. The substance, dubbed opiorphin, I'm sure I said it wrong, may spawn a new generation of natural painkillers that relieve pain as well as morphine, but without the addictive and psychological side effects of the traditional drug. Natural born painkiller found in saliva. This is an article in 2006, so clearly it didn't get anywhere with that. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> big pharma shut them down. Uh, did you ever, with you, do you think like, uh, like so cavemen why- times, they were like, spit on it? It'll make it, is that what they say, spit on it? I don't Did think say anyone that? says that. First do of all, when you like a poke, do you like a poke? Like a poke, <laughs> suck on the, on the blood. <laughs> like when you got like when you got like a, I don't like suck a, on blood. Like a thorn or like a splinter, you were like, I don't suck on like suck on it. You know, you don't, like what, what? no sucking. Well, how how like, is your saliva gonna get there? I don't know, like sometimes I put like on my mouth, my mouth on like which you shouldn't. On what? <laughs> don't act. <laughs> crazy you just said it like uh, if you have like a poke well, I was like, sometimes like, like this like, but you're like i just put my mouth on it it's weirder w- weirder you- than sucking <laughs> yeah sucking's way weirder well, no, i was thinking like, you get like a like a, <laughs> a, like, a like a needle prick or like a something yeah. you're like yeah i'm not gonna like act it out <laughs> you <laughs> like, just did, did it. It. <laughs> <laughs> but like i'm not just like Sucking I was gonna say, you ever put you your mouth on it? Like it sounds weirder to say put your mouth on it than it does. Well, I don't know. I'm not, I don't like actively suck. I like feel like I yeah. Sometimes with like my mouth. On. <laughs> now I've got the giggies. I don't think I do. I think I like wipe it or like put it in the Whoa, sink. Whoa! Why'd you do that when you said wipe it? Why was it a front wipe? Oh, you idiot! Because my pants are here. I went like that. Go. Sometimes I just wipe it. Like I don't. We weren't even talking about that. I can't breathe. I hate you. No, like I don't suck all my blood. I don't think you never tasted your own blood. Is what I've you're taste, oh, for sure. I've tasted my own blood. Yeah, I for sure many a time. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying like, wait, why are we talking about something? Oh, because natural painkiller in your mouth. Mm-hmm. All like, it makes like, does it make it feel better, right? It doesn't make it feel. Maybe it does. Well, I'm saying maybe. Well, maybe some part of that painkiller is in there when you're when you're like when you're putting your mouth on your cuts. I don't know. I just, I feel like the mouth. Yeah. Sucking your cuts is worse than putting your mouth on. I feel like your mouth. It's what? I don't know. Your mouth is so full of bacteria. It seems like it might. And painkillers. It might have a painkiller, but it's also like super dirty. You know what I mean? Don't. I mean. So it's it's not endorsed by any science or facts. What's interesting is it's like, how come then when you get any dentist work done, it's like so freaking painful. It must be. Mm. Not oh, really good painkillers. Like, shouldn't they not feel pain then? If it, if the painkillers in my mouth, in my spit, 
the, the dentist should never hurt. stronger than morphine? I've never even had morphine, obviously. I, yeah, this, so you're just saying nonsense that you heard on no, a website. No, it says it all for real. On Google, it says this. From 2017, even, this one. Spit it out. Facts about saliva. Did you know your saliva contains a, pot- a potent painkiller? Human saliva is six times more powerful than morphine. Yeah, but I feel like it's the same as like, um, like Flynn found a daddy long leg spider. Mm-hmm. And we were looking it up. And they apparently they're like, it's a deadly venomous spider, but their mouths are too small to bite you. And mm-hmm. so like you can't yeah. get hurt by them because they can't bite you anyways, but they are a venomous spider. You know what I mean? Right. Who knew? Like, I th- but like you can't do, it's like in too small of a ratio to do anything. I feel like it must be the same thing mm-hmm. for that. And again, not endorsed by. I don't know. I need to science. learn more about this spit painkiller business. Should be spitting on stuff that hurts. Put your mouth on it. Anyway, um, uh, let's say thanks to our next sponsor, guys. It's a wonderful one. It's, of course, stamps.com. We got a small business going up in our home. Uh, I obviously run my own business with Miranda Sings, the company, the empire. (laughs) But I'm always shipping stuff out. And um, we, of course, love stamps.com in this household. So I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Time is money. Don't waste either with repeated trips to the post office. With stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process. So you can spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy. We love the service. We love it so much because the post office is such a drag. No offense, post office, but I don't want to go stand in line there. So it saves so much time and money. It's really wonderful. And it also saves me quite a lot of stress, if I'm Mm -hmm. being honest. The parking at our local post office. Garbage. Like. No fun. So much time. They're working hard. I I respect what they do there, but it's too hard to park there. So I'm just going to use stamps.com. Yep. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Whether you're in an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. All you need is a computer and a standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Stop overpaying for shipping with stamps.com. Sign up with promo code relax for a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code relax. Go check it out. Okay, so I'm I'm really excited to talk about this TV show. I'm obsessed with it's top notch quality entertainment, guys. This is not sponsored by this TV show. I just really love it. You so, said, yeah, you said to me the other day, you're like, there's this new TV show I'm obsessed with. So you have to watch insane. it. It's so insane. And I go, it must be, it must be a new dating show. And it is. It is. On Netflix. And it's, it is. It's, it's unbelievable. But are things cake or not cake? Because I don't know that I'll be into it if they're not cutting things that could be cake. It's it's so much better. It's the craziest, worst idea I've ever heard in my life. And somehow people are doing it. So I think it's like the same creators of love is blind and it's called, Oh, yeah, it must be, it's, it's called the it ultimatum, called? the ultimatum. I, yeah. Full it's disclosure. So good. You made me watch 10 minutes of it last night, but our babies were sleeping. And I said, I can't watch this with you and the babies. Cause I need to be yelling at the television yeah, as we watch. It's it. crazy. So the concept is, of this show. It's the craziest concept for a TV show I've ever heard in my life. Serious monogamous couples like that are in serious relationships to the point where one of the people in the couple dumb says, I want to get married. And the other person's like, I want to marry you too, but I'm not quite ready. And so one person gives the other, their partner an ultimatum. Now, usually an ultimatum is like, Hey, marry me or I'm out. But on this show, the ultimatum is let's date other people who are having ultimatums. And so they basically they like, there's like a bunch of different couples. They, uh, someone in all these different couples has given their partner an ultimatum and then they all date each other. Mm. And then they pick the person they want to live with and like fake marriage with for three weeks. And they live with someone else for three weeks, hook up with them, like basically act married to them and then go back to their original partner. And then they decide if they want to marry them or not their original partner or the new partner. That's what was insane to me. Like you've watched, I think four episodes of this. So you obviously know more. I only watched 10 minutes 
and I couldn't speak because the babies were sleeping. I just kind of whisper screamed at you like, this is great. Like, this is crazy. And it's hosted by Nick Lachey, Nick and Vanessa Lachey. Yeah. And what was crazy to me that like this, the first episode, so they're explaining the show. And so them as hosts are explaining to these couples what's going to be happening. And they're introducing the couples. And it seemed like their explanation was so long and intense and crazy. It was like, you guys are couples. There's an ultimatum. And now you're going to be dating around all the other couples. And then you're going to go live with a different person than your significant other for three weeks. And then you're going to come back to your significant other mm-hmm. and live with them for three mm-hmm. weeks. I was like, this isn't like a, this isn't like a game show. This it's isn't a crazy. dating show. This is like a, we're going to, we're going to destroy your, your life relationship. Show. Yeah, like, it's like crazy. you have signed up. You're probably making zero dollars. Like they're not paying these people to be it's, on this show. It's, it's basically a show where the, the like producers, I feel like we're just like, all right, how do we get serious couples to be on a show where we just like, what was the casting where they, call? They, like they must have, they had to seek out these people. How does that know, happen? How do they find them? I don't know, but I feel like the producers must have been like, let's make a show where we find serious couples and serious relationships and we make them, them cheat on each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. that's all it is. They're, They're just like, cheating how, on how each can other. we get, like people like in vulnerable circumstances in their relationships to like lose their mind when the other one cheats on them. But like willingly, like they all cheat on, on each like other and they know each other's cheating. dating show. It's crazy. So like they all go and it's like black ha- live with these other people who are also giving their partners ultimatums and they like are trying to make their partners jealous or whatever. Cause they're giving them ultimatums, you know? So they're like cheating it's cheating. They're like making out with, sleeping with. Well, I guess it's not. Cra- if they, it's I mean, so crazy if to me. If they've like uh, agreed to be on this show together, but obviously someone's going to be. Then there isn't an ultimatum. It's just your relationship doesn't work. Like there's right. no world. There's no world. No, there's going to be no good no outcome. no world in which I would ever be like, I don't think yeah, go any live of with these, another woman I mean, for three weeks I, I, and hook up with her. Good luck to them. But I don't think any of these couples if they were genuine going into this, which like how, how, I mean, how much could you be to like agree to, I mean, I don't know. It just seems right. wild to me, but I don't, I don't think that any of them will still be together. It's uh, so insane. This. Having not seen any of it, that would just be my guess. I, it is such a train wreck. It's such a mess. I love it so much. I hope for all the people's sake who are on the show that it's like, they're playing it up and it's like, right. I hope that they're just like, Oh, this will be funny. And they get their buddy. Like some girls like, oh, there's this show looking for couples doing ultimatums. You want to go on and pretend we're in a relationship because I hope that they're not genuinely like ruining these people's lives. Well, I don't know if it, I mean, in the, again, I've only seen the first 10 minutes, but it comes across as if these people are, the relationships seem dramatically unbalanced it's as cr- far as it's like, so insane. like, I love you more. No, I love you more. It's like, no you definitely right. love him or her more. You know right. what I mean? Like it seems extremely unbalanced. I mean, again, I don't know these people and I don't know how they found these people. Yeah. Um, but I imagine that I will watch it all. All I'm saying is and, it's so uh, good and I'm obsessed with it. Just, yeah, it's one of those like, this is wild yelling at the TV kind of so, like, shows. I'm, and uh, it seems like, again, like cut the cake that's not cake. Like a uh, brain dead television. It's so good. That it's I not brain dead. It's need so and good. crave. I love it. And um, I feel like everyone should watch it. So <laughs> Give funny. me an ultimatum right now, love. No, I want, I just want, I want you to do your book thing. You said you had a book. No, give I me an ultimatum. If you were to give me an ultimatum. ultimatum. Yeah. I, I literally can't even think of one. Would My you go on that show with me if I asked you? Literally no. I If I was like, hey, we're married. Mm-hmm. We have three kids. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm still not sure. Like, what can we, would you want to go on this Netflix show with me where like, you know, you know, I can date around, but I'm sure, like, but I love you. And I'm sure that, that it'll just prove to me how much I love you. If I could just date around with like six other couples, like for three weeks. There's this crazy. I'm it, sure. Cause that's literally the conversation crazy. I watched happen on that show last night. It was this guy saying, I look, I love you. And he's looking her dead in the eyes. He didn't blink. I know. He didn't even blink. And he was like, I just need to date around oh, like crazy. six there's other. This, there's this one part. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but like there's a guy who like hooks up with another girl, like n- who's not part of the show, by the way, he hooks up with a girl like at a club or something. Who's nothing. Wait, to do already the show. in that show. You've only watched four episodes. 
Yeah, it's insanity. Just, but so, uh, not a contestant? Just not like, a contestant. He like hooks up with a girl and the girlfriend is like mad and she's like, I can't believe you did this. She's not even on this Netflix and he's show like, with us? He's like, I did this for you. Yeah. You wanted to come on this show. You wanted me to explore other women. I did it for you. You wanted this. Like it's like is that it's gaslighting? so evil. Is that what's is that gaslighting? Eric, Eric is constantly like, is that gaslighting? Is this gaslighting? I just think, every, gas- I think he thinks it everything all is gaslighting. Be. Which I think a lot of people think every no gaslighting is when I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, and, every, like, and by the way, turning this turning down is the gaslight. It's like it's <laughs> brighter. No, it's not brighter. Like it's this like is that. This, we have the same conversation every time. Every time he goes, is this gaslighting? And the second I go, well, actually, gaslighting is you cut me off every time we go. No, I know what it is. Every time I've, I don't think I've ever actually given a definition of gaslighting because you just like, you never will. All right. I'm fine with that. Um, what's your book game thing? I want to hear about your book thing. You said you had books or something. No, you've given me definitions of gaslighting. You do all the time. Is that gaslighting? Am I gaslighting you now by saying that you what? have? Uh, I no, because you didn't make me feel crazy. I just thought you were being weird. It's like making the other person feel insane uh-huh. for like, I, I'm not going to, you know what it is, right? You know what gaslighting is, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was gaslighting you that I didn't know what gaslighting was. You get it? You're stupid. Uh, yeah, I had a book thing. What's a book thing? I'm going to do a book review. A book review of what book? Just kidding. A book review of your books. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, Colleen. Okay. I have written You've two written books. You've written two books. So I've heard. This one says... Number one New York Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. And this one says number one New York Times bestselling author. I was on the New York Times bestsellers <laughs> list of that one. It just isn't printed on that book. <laughs> your face. I got so defensive. Your face. <laughs> wait, um, wait, wait. Before we get into your game, actually, sorry, I want to say thanks to our final I was sponsor. Gonna, look, there's even something bookmarked here. It was a picture of us. Oh, that's cute. Look at us. Oh, cuties. I love you. Um, let me say thanks to our final sponsor of the day before we get into your book review of my own books. I'm a little scared. Hello Fresh, everybody. We love Hello Fresh in our house. Skip trips to the grocery store, guys. You can count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that is why it's America's number one meal kit. You guys, we freaking love HelloFresh. It makes our life so much easier up in this his house, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. Ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in under a week. So they always arrive fresh, all without a trip to the grocery store or farmer's market. It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come pre-portioned so you're not overbuying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family-friendly or quick and easy recipes. HelloFresh's chefs really know how to diversify the menu with seasonal recipes like salmon limon and pasta primavera. Do you hear that? Mm-hmm. I even said it with an accent. I'm so uh, Salmon and lemon. Like, is that s- salmon with lemon? I would assume so. Okay. Lemon, which, um, as I we did. know, man-made. <laughs> man-made. Nice callback. Yeah. Uh, so you can also customize your favorite dishes with the new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. Uh, HelloFresh saves us so much time and it gives us a cute little date night because we get all these yummy fresh ingredients to make a yummy, fresh, delicious meal. It's wonderful. You guys should check it out if you want to. And if you do want to, I got a special code for you. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Relax16 and use code Relax16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That is HelloFresh.com slash Relax16. Use our code Relax16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go check it out today, guys. Try out America's number one meal kit. Check it out. All right. So what's this book game you have or book review? Are you going to review my book? Yeah. Before we get to that, speaking of date night. Were we we speaking of date night? I think think we did the... (laughs) Uh, when we were talking about HelloFresh. Okay. Uh, we were going to have a date t- night tonight. Huh? We were. You were? Yeah, we were going to go to the Kids' Choice Awards. Oh, no. We How much did oh, that I guess, cost? Yeah. How what? much did that set you back? Oh, yeah, because I paid for my award nomination. Uh-huh. Uh, no, I did not. I didn't even know I was nominated. I was tagged in something that said I was nominated. I was like, oh, cool. And um, yeah, we were going to go. I was like, do you want to go to the Kids' Choice Awards with me? I was nominated again. And Eric was like, yeah, I'll go with you. because we no, never- I really wanted to go. Yeah. 
So I, well, I, I had, inter- I was interested. I wouldn't say I really wanted to go. I was like, yeah, sure. So I asked my agent, I was like, Hey, can you see, um, if, like, can you get the information so that I can go to the kids choice awards? And he's like, Oh yeah, sure. And then I didn't hear anything. So I reached out again. I was like, Hey, am I going to the kids choice awards? Like what's going on? I was nominated and he's like, Oh yeah, that I, let me check again. That's so weird. And then he <laughs> sends an email being like, you're not going, <laughs> <laughs> you're not invited essentially. And I was like, what? Basically they were just like, Oh, you know, we're only having people attend who are presenting awards. Mm-hmm. Is that a COVID thing? I don't know, I guess, but uh-huh. I, I wasn't invited I, essentially. And I was like, wait, so I'm nominated, but not invited. I mean, whatever. It's not a big deal, but um, I think I've, no, I've never won? been, I've never been, no, I did not win. Um, <laughs> you should have, you did in my heart. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I've never been to the kids choice awards. I oh. was supposed to go once, but Parker went in my place cause I was stuck at an airport. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, fun. And, uh, yeah. So I was excited to go. Well, congratulations on the, it's know. an honor to be nominated. Is that the, the this orange? This is slimy one. Yeah. Slimy the orange. orange carpet. Mm-hmm. So they have the orange blimp is the. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's huge to be nominated for one of those. I think that's so exciting. It's so cool. It's but then they weren't like, wait, like you can't come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just were hoping I wouldn't find out I was nominated or something. That's so weird. Because like no one told me. And so then like when I found out I was nominated, I was like, oh, cool. Does that mean I'm going? And they're like, nah. What, were you, what, cate- what was your category? Just I don't remember. Hottest Wife? Yeah, Hottest Wife Award. I don't remember. It was it's like. It's weird that the Kids Choice Awards best, has a Hottest um, Wife Award. It was like, com- no, was it comedy or YouTuber or. I don't know what it was, honestly. I don't remember. What do you do? <laughs> you don't even know what you do. I don't do. remember what it was for. It was influencer or something like that? I don't remember what I was nominated. I was nominated for something. And I don't know who won my category, um, but I was not there. <clears throat> Eric's dusting off my self-help book. Dust it off. Let's see here. All right. My book review is good book. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I wanted to, um, we did this once in an episode where we did like free association where you would just talk uh-huh. and I would look uh, like looking through, uh, I think it was a Shel Silverstein book at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but you wrote this book. I did with my brother. It was number one New York Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if you uh, remember what you wrote. Probably not, honestly. Um Puberty. 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 Is, puberty oh, pu- it does, see, you do remember. Yeah. <laughs> puberty. Puberty is a time where you get hairs and smells. Oh my gosh. This is like, I've said that. You also might experience getting chesticle lumps. <gasps> cover, oh my God. Cover these. Also, you might leak things. It will ruin panties. That's what it what? says in this book. No, it doesn't. You made that up. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> what? I mean, I took a I chance by going straight to, to puberty in oh this book. Oh my god! And the and the and the arrows of smells and hairs. I can't believe I put that in there. Um, that's then crazy. The next page says monthly lady time. As a girl, you sometimes get leaky after puberty, and you can have to clean it, or you could get an infection. An infection. Infe- how do you say Infection. It? Infection. Yeah. I uh, can't listen to this book. My audience is very different in times. Different times. You can make a diaper with toilet paper or use a pad. Do not use tampons. They are for sinners. This is a exit only place. <laughs> 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 I love the idea of Miranda calling the front part the exit only place. <laughs> That's really funny to me. Um, and then you've... <laughs> So funny. And then then you have another book. Uh, This one's called. My Diary. Diary. You know diary is spelled wrong here, right? I do know. Was that a conscious choice? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. It's meant to look like diarrhea? Of course. Ah. Of course. (laughs) Um, Would you say that poop humor is your go-to? You know that we talk about poop in every episode of this podcast. So. Meredith. Haters back off, Miranda. Wait, I guess, Wait, Mer- who's I guess Mer- Mer- Meredith. Meredith never got her book. <laughs> who's Meredith? <laughs> Meredith, if, uh, <laughs> if Meredith you're watching. Never. If there's a I woman, think- if there's someone named Meredith out there who never got a signed book from me, I apologize. You know what's funny is that Shakespeare. Shakespeare where'd you get this book? Shakespeare created the name Meredith. Wait, where'd you get this book from? Where'd you find it? Uh, 
Was it on they're, a- literally, they're all over the house. You're such a narcissist. Your books just line no, every bookshelf. But was is it just on the books. bookshelf or was it like on a table of like where I'm supposed to be shipping things out to fans? I don't know. I just grabbed it. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> all right. Uh, you messed up my joke about saying that Shakespeare created the name Meredith. Oh, good one. In Romeo and Juliet, the uh, apothecary's okay, anyway, daughter is let's, named What are we Meredith. doing with the book here? What's the plan here? I'm very um, uncomfortable. This also, this, this also is a book, uh, and you wrote it, and I mm-hmm. wondered if you remembered anything you wrote in this one. Mm. Uh, let's see. Is Probably there not. A, a table of contents? You don't remember it? I mean, I know that it's like all of Miranda's diaries taped together is the concept. Uh huh. So there's like her baby book, her homeschool book, her like high school diary. Um, I don't remember what other ones, but it's like all just all Miranda's diaries taped together. Yeah, it's so good. I love this book. Mm-hmm. Oh, there, you mentioned Frankie. There's Frankie. Mm-hmm. Um, you're good at books. You're good at writing them. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> I like it. all these. But there's so many words. I was gonna like should I just read a passage. No, I mean, there the book is the book is is diary. So yeah, it's a lot of writing. I wrote a lot. Is that set? That's that's Seth that yeah. yeah. Are you just gonna like look at it? Is this not good podcast? I, I think maybe not reading, just you reading uh, a book is probably not the best podcast. What was the plan for you right here? Uh, oh, this was, page was, has spaghettios on the- it. This page has spaghettios on it, and the actual page literally did have spaghettios on it. Mm. And there's a couple pages in this diary in this book where there's food that I've like taped to pages or glued to pages. And I would ship the pages to New York where my publishers were. Mm -hmm. And then they would, they would, they wanted to be the ones to photograph the pages for the book. So someone's job was photographing your old food. Well, the problem was that in the travel. Yeah. These are, they're, the spaghetti is like rotten in this page, which is fine yeah. with me, but there's a page with um, McDonald's chicken nuggets. And when they, by the time they photographed it, it was like black with mold. Like yeah. the food was like black with mold. And so they had to ship it back and I had to redo it. It was very sad. Yeah. So anyway, um, I could read aloud or I could just, uh, or you could, what, I mean, I don't know what your plan was here. You were just like, just wanting to talk about my books. Yeah. Am I in here? Uh, I don't remember. Did someone actually get a Miranda Sings tattoo? Yes. That's pretty in cool. In Atlanta, I think. Someone was like, sign my leg, and then or and then they got it tattooed on their body. I'll get, I'll get a Miranda Sings tattoo. You will? Yeah. Please don't. You don't. would not get a Miranda Sings yeah, tattoo. It's going it's to be right here on my neck. It's going to say, my girl's a YouTuber. Oh, my God. That is the worst <laughs> tattoo I could ever think of. My my girlfriend. My girlfriend's my, a YouTuber, and I call her Babe. And I call her Babe. Um. Well, I'm proud of you for writing these books. I was going to do that free association thing. You know, oh, they do we it. Did. You're just going to read a word from. Well, the book? it kind of worked because then all of a sudden you were talking about uh, spaghettios. Okay. So read a, read something from the book, and then I and then I just tell you a story. Is that yeah? The, okay. Okay. Go for it. I'm waiting. I'm trying to find a good page here. They're all pages. They're all right? good pages, love. Well, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it like that. Um, go for it. Uh, dear diary. Are you gonna just read the page? <laughs> well, what? A, yeah. Okay, go for it. Sorry, I haven't written in here in so long. Mm-hmm. It's been years, but I've been busy. Get off my back. Let's see. What have I been up to? You should be reading this in the Miranda Sings voice, but whatever. Got a pink jinky. <gasps> I got a what? Pink, got pink jacket. <laughs> what? I don't know. I can, I've never. I, mean, I can't hear what you say. I got I've, a pink jacket. Got pink jacket. Okay. How would you say say it? A pink jacket. Pink jacket. Yeah, so I was pretty right. Gosh. What's ha- what is the segment? <laughs> you're just reading the diary. I found no. You're supposed to then free associate uh some sort of story. Okay. Uh, found a new green hot dog. <laughs> Is this a Christopher Walken impression or a Miranda uh, Sings impression? I found a new brand of hot dog. <laughs> That's pretty I good. I really like it. <laughs> um, do you have any hot dog stories? Hot dogs. Um, What's the best hot dog you ever had in your life? Oh, man. Oh, the you know what's the best hot dog I've ever had in my life? Flynn's birthday party when he turned one. Oh, yeah. You got a hot dog cart, man. To I did. Come and made hot dogs in the front. In our front yard, and oh, it had such a pun, like a punny. Oh name my god! To that car, I can't but remember. The I don't name remember, of it. but like 
The hot dogs were sure so good. Emails. And then he like he made one that was just like a plain hot dog with sauerkraut and mustard. Uh huh. And it was I've never liked sauerkraut. And I always want ketchup, just ketchup and mustard. But oh, it was, you've, you always ask for sauerkraut now, I feel like. Well, I haven't in a while. I'm just now remembering that I like it. And now I like, I really want it. Can we get, somehow get hot dogs and sauerkraut in this house well, like, I'm, right I'm, now? I'm look, I'm searching in like emails from, um, I guess it would be two and a half years ago. Cause I'm trying to find that. Oh my gosh. That, but yeah, I think that was the best hot dog I've ever had. Sarin doggity. Sarin doggity. Yeah. Instead Serendip of serendipity. It was, oh man, it was, it was a, so uh, good. An awesome, uh. An awesome bro. Oh, so yeah. An awesome dude. That sounds really good. An awesome good. man. Do we have hot dogs? An awesome guy. Saren Do we have hot dogs? Yeah, we do. Do we have sauerkraut? No, of course. Dang. We, we, like sauerkraut is like something I think that needs to be very fresh and we're just not like buying on a reg on the regular. That's so good. Hot dog, sauerkraut, mustard from that place. If it wasn't 1040, I would go buy them for you. All right. Well, we're going to go. We love you guys. You know where they have so, sauerkraut so. right now? Hmm. Kids Choice Awards. They definitely don't have sauerkraut oh, at every table words. for all their guests. I don't think they have tables. It's like an audience. Anyway, I was not invited. Um, but uh, that's all right. Honor to be nommed. And uh, we're going to go. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.